Hi everyone, it's Laura Kasowitz with Hartford Stitch and thank you for joining me for our very first Hartford Stitch at home. My goal is to bring you some tips and tricks to bring your home sewing game up to the next level. And today we're gonna to be talking about cleaning your sewing machine. Now maybe this is something that you do frequently, but I can't tell you how many people have come into my studio and said I've owned this machine for five years or 10 years and I've never cleaned out the lint and I've never oiled it. Doing those things frequently will really extend the life of your machine and improve your sewing projects considerably. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what tools we need. Of course, you need your sewing machine. You also need to have some sewing machine oil. So you really wanna make sure it says sewing machine oil. Don't use some kind of oil you would find in your kitchen or um, another machine oil. So this right here says sewing machine oil and I'll put a link down in the comments to it. And this one I like, it's got a nice little spout. I'm gonna, ew. Okay, well, the spout's not coming out. I'll get it before we start going here. It's very messy. Um, has a nice little spout that comes out that makes it easier. But so sewing machine oil is something you definitely want. You also wanna have a little brush. Now, if your machine is new, you'll probably find one of these in the little extra accessories toolkit that comes with your machine. It's just like a short little bristle brush. Um, sometimes they have the seam ripper attached to it in the newer ones. If you've lost yours, you can always find another one at wallwack.com. So much oil in my hands. Yuck. Find a new one at uh, wallwack.com. If you don't have one and you desperately need to clean your machine, uh, a good Q-tip will work as well. Just make sure it's not one where the lint comes off of it a lot because that'll just cause more problem. But so a little brush. And then lastly, you want to have a key. So this is the kind of key that comes with the Singer Heavy Duty 4423, which is what I'm going to be cleaning today. Your key may look a little bit more like a screwdriver, but we're going to use this to actually get the top uh, the top needle plate off so we can get into the bobbin area. And of course, it's always a good idea to look at your user manual and see if they have any tips and tricks about oiling your specific machine. Of course, you always wanna do what's right for your machine. All right, so I'm gonna join you in a moment at the sewing machine. If you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe. I'd love to be bringing you more of these tips and trick videos. And of course, we always have our full class list at hartfordstitch.com. Um, and I hope to see some of you there. Thanks so much. So I have taken off the cover just to show you that you can already see all this lint in here that's built up. This is definitely a sign that you need to clean your machine. And believe it or not, I cleaned my machine probably three days ago, but then I quilted a queen size quilt. So that generates a ton of lint. If you haven't already, you wanna unplug your machine just to be safe and remove your presser foot. So get that out of the way. You like my nails, my dyeing that I did the other day? Real rough. Okay, then you wanna find that little key that we mentioned. And you wanna loosen this screw and that screw. Now, if this is the first time you've ever done this, these are going to be very, very tight. And you might have to really put a little muscle into it. It never has to be that tight again, but if you're having a difficulty with it, don't worry, that is why. So you can see mine come off much easier. They have been cleaned out many times. Let's see if I can reach over to this one. All right, both screws are off. And now I'm gonna lift away my plate. Ooh, you can already see what's going on there. Okay, so we wanna look right here at these feed dogs. If you turn the hand wheel on the right side of your machine, you wanna get your needle and your feed dogs rather up as high as they can go so that you have as much room as possible underneath them between the bobbin case and, and the dogs. Your next screws that you're looking at are these guys. You don't wanna loosen them so much that they come out, but it does help if you can loosen them just a little bit to get this little arm here up. And again, if this is your first time doing it, the factory settings are super tight. Don't lose them, just loosen them up a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna take a th look at this bobbin case here, and I want you to look at it really carefully. In fact, more than that, I want you to pause the video, I want you to take your camera and your phone and take a photo of what this looks like. I think that this, especially one of the first times you clean your machine, can be one of the most confusing parts when putting it all back together. So when you take your photo, make sure you get this little kind of nubbin right here in it, and the, the hooks here for the tension hooks, see where they're lined up before you do anything else. You'll really benefit from it later. 
Okay, so once you've done that, you have these loosened and you took your photo and your feed dogs are as high as they'll go, you should be able to pop it out. Now, sometimes you have to jiggle it. You have to work it a little bit more. Don't worry about it. Don't force anything. Um, if you can loosen these up a little bit more, that helps. And then you kind of just have to like ease it on out and put it to the side. All right, so if you see in here, this is a mess. So you're going to take your brush, and if you don't have a brush, a little Q-tip or something will do. Sometimes I've used um, kind of rolled up batting, and you're going to start to clean that out. I mean, look at that, that big old mess there. And you're going to clean, clean, clean. And then once you think you've gotten it all, so the video angle of this video makes me totally see like more up there. You're going to turn your hand wheel, which rotates this shuttle here. You kind of have to work around your needle if your needle's still in there. And you can go through and clean out the rest of it. So once you feel like it's clean, it's one of those things where you can kind of keep on going and going and going. You want to take a quick look at the bobbin case itself and clean off like that little fuzz right there. Then you want to go ahead and take that pin, or you can use the edge of a seam ripper, uh, the point of a seam ripper, or if you have a point to your brush like I do, you can use that as well. And you want to get in there between the feed dogs, and sometimes you're able to lift very satisfying little lint pads out. Mine didn't seem to get too much this last time, but I do see some more lint in the back there that we're going to clear out. All right. So now it comes to the oil. You oil wherever metal touches metal. And when it comes to changing your bobbin, really what we're looking at is this little disc right here. And you can kind of check it with your finger and then see, and you'll see I actually pulled up some lint. There's a little bit of oil on my finger, but I think it could probably use a little bit more. And the reason we're doing it right here is the bobbin of your bottom of your bobbin case also has this metal disc. And so the two are gonna rub against each other. Again, you always want to use sewing machine oil, and you really just use a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Just enough to lubricate it there. So a tiny, tiny amount. Too much can really harm your sewing machine. All right, now it's time for us to put everything back together. So this is where that photo comes in handy. But if you don't want to access your photo or you forgot to take one, what I want you to look for is that little nubbin here and this little spring finger out of the way this little spring here those two are going to go together so if you pop it on in the metal track should be in the front of the machine and you can see how I have a little bit of pressure against this spring right here and I can tighten up my screws again nothing has to be as tight as it was when you first bought the machine but you do want them to be secure all right that is all set. You should still have a little bit of movement here, so the bobbin case shouldn't be totally, totally stuck in place. After that, you can put back on your cover. These pop in really nice and easily. And then put in your set screws. Oh, I'm having a hard time with that one. tighten them again they don't have to be as tight as they were now it's also a good time to change your needle if you haven't changed your needle in a while um, those do get dull and they do get bent and chances are if you gathered enough lint uh, in your machine to warrant it being clean you've worn out your needle enough to warrant it being replaced so now you're all set what I like to do before I start the machine uh, start sewing again is uh, put my cover back on don't thread it yet, but just run the machine for a little bit just to kind of move that oil around and you should be all set to go. So this one wasn't too bad. This was my little pile of filthy lint. There have been times where I have come up with full like handfuls, I'm ashamed to admit. Um, so I'd love to see what comes out of your machine. Make sure you leave it in the comments or tag us in a photo. I know it seems silly, but they're always good reminders to other sewers that they need to keep cleaning your machine. Thanks so much. Happy stitching.